This episode of The Her Show is brought to you by Knack Bags, the best backpacks for working from anywhere. Hey everyone, it's Hirsch. I want to take a few moments of your time to talk about today's sponsor, Knack. If you're like me, I'm constantly on the move, whether it's for business, leisure, or any sort of thing. And because of that, I need to carry my electronics with me. I have a laptop, I have a tablet, I've got, of course I've got my cell phone, but I want to tell you about our sponsor, Knack. They have created this beautifully designed bag. I know what's really cool about these is that there's no need to choose between style and functionality. These bags are designed for professionals in mind with function, convenience. It doesn't make you look like a student, so that's that's really nice. With this patented design, Knack is the first backpack that expands. I mean, look at this. I mean, there's so much room in here that you could put anything in here. And it's got a professional appearance to help you look your best whether you're in the office or you're out in the world. Get a Knack bag today and stop worrying about, you know, the life essentials and stuff, making sure that everything you carry is safe. And if you go to knackbags.com and enter the promo code HERSH for a limited time, you will get a free gift. This TSA approved lock. Just add the TSA lock to your cart with your bag of purchase. I mean, I got this beautiful olive green. They come in black, they come in blue, tan, gray. So many amazing colors to choose from. Again, go to the website, knackbags.com, enter the promo code HERSH, and you will get a free TSA approved lock. And now, back to our show. From the Empty the Bench Podcast Network, straight out of New York City, it's time for the Hearst Show. He's back and better than ever. And on today's show, voice actress Caitlin Robra. With your host, Kyle Hershon. And now, here's Hirsch. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to The Hearst Show. We're back from our mid-season break for season two. Hope you guys have enjoyed your Mother's Day yesterday. It was so much fun. Got to hang out with the family. Uh, had a little barbecue, and so it's going to be fun. That was fun. Um, but today uh, is something special. I got to tell you this right now. My guest today, she is a voice actress uh, all the way out in Los Angeles, California. She's done some amazing things uh, with Adult Swim and most notably for Disney. And I think right now she's best known as uh, Mrs. Mickey Mouse, the voice of Minnie Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Caitlin Robrock. Hi, Caitlin. Hi, Kyle. <laughs> you know, th this is just so exciting. And, you know, we're also making history here on The Hearst Show because uh, Caitlin is the first woman guest on my show. So congratulations on what that. about time? <laughs> so, uh, Caitlin, I, I got to ask you, how are you doing right now uh, in, uh, in Los Angeles and all that fun stuff? Doing good. Doing good. Weather's been fair. Uh, busy, busy, but it's been nice. Yeah, I, I, can, I can tell, uh, especially behind you. You got the uh, Cinderella castle behind oh, you. A little, yeah. little bit cloudy, but uh, uh, we'll suffice. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I got to ask this uh, right now, um, since, you know, you and I come from this world of voice acting, obviously you've gotten you've gotten the better break than I have. But uh, I got to I got to ask, like, when did you realize that, hey, this is something I could do uh, that can I can make a living from? Well, I knew I wanted to do, I knew I wanted to be an actor when we saw, my family and I went and saw Hook back in 1991, 90? Uh, yeah, we'll I think it was 19, <laughs> it was something, around, yeah, I'm, I'm going to say 1991, we'll just say that. Um, and I knew I wanted to be an actor after seeing Robin Williams in that movie. Uh, and yes. then it narrowed down to voiceover, which I knew was a thing. Because we, I grew up watching Looney Tunes and and Disney Afternoon, and so I knew doing voices in cartoons was a thing, but I didn't really marry the idea to like this is an actual person until I saw Aladdin and Robin Williams again as Genie, and that's when I knew like I want to do what he's doing. I want to be funny and make people feel the way I'm feeling right now by watching him. Oh, of so course. That's, that's when I first knew I wanted to do it. I mean. When I started, you know, th thinking about doing this thing of voiceover, I, I actually was like 
more into impressions if anything um when when i started you know doing my thing i'm more of a narrations uh audiobook documentary sort of person now uh but when i did like impressions i, I could nail gilbert gottfried and i could scare people with how uncanny i sort of sounded well if you wanted to uh say uh something uh, no, i'm not good today i didn't have my tea today but that's okay <laughs> me neither uh but then again you know the this is a crazy world and you know you, you hear all these people doing all these uh characters and all this stuff and you, you don't really see the face you know in front of it until you realize like, ooh, this is actually kind of cool um so i i also wanted to i also wanted to get in you know in touch with you because i knew how much uh you've been involved with disney recently especially uh and, Raining the helms of the great uh, late great Rusi Taylor as mm -hmm. Minnie Mouse. Um, now, uh, did you ever meet Rusi in uh, in person? I did. Yes, I had what I call the three strikes meeting. Oh, geez. Because um, I had met her. Uh, we there was a society there was a society function back in like two thousand nine two thousand ten mm -hmm. around that, and it's so long ago. But a friend and I had gone, and she was there saying hello to people. And as she was leaving, she was saying hi. So it was like, OK, that was kind of a meeting because I didn't say anything. <laughs> I was too verklempt. So mm -hmm. I didn't say anything. And then I had attended a conservatory. Uh, like 2011, okay. uh, where she was a guest speaker. And so we all got to meet her afterwards and, and thanked her, shook her hand, took a photo. But again, I was really overwhelmed because meeting your heroes is a daunting prospect. <laughs> so it was like, OK, I didn't meet her and I have proof. And, my, you know, my face is all red and tear stained, but it happened. <laughs> and then uh, seven, six years after that, um, at June Foray's memorial service, mm -hmm. a lot of a lot of us turned out to celebrate her life. And she was there. And my friend Katie Lee, who has known Rusi for years, 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 years. And she was there. And she's like, Caitlin, I want you to meet my friend Rusi. So it was a real meeting. There at that point go. where I had that confidence to say, you know, thank you so much for all your work. It's very inspiring. At the time I worked at Disneyland. So like I helped our character friends and that made her happy because she knew a lot of our character friends. That I did not know about you. You worked at Disneyland. Yeah. So so that, that was a nice little bonding moment. So I, I didn't put that I was a voice actor because like in the moment I wanted it to be about her, not about me. Right. So it was really nice to see that. To have that photo. I got a photo of her and Katie on stage, which I thought was really nice for her. Aww. And I've got the program somewhere because Katie gave me a program. Katie's a really good friend. She's helped me out a lot. <laughs> but that was like, oh, I feel really good. Like, who knows if I'll meet her again? But this was a wonderful moment that I can hold on to. And I, I would course. be happy if that was that was it. Of course. Um, yeah. And Throughout my life, of course, you know, hearing Rusi on all different sort of shows, The Simpsons, uh, of course, Disney, uh, and of, you know, she did so many things. And looking at the credits and then seeing, of course, like her resume, and I'm like, she did that. She did that, too. And that mm -hmm. I'm like, Rusi, in my opinion, was the female Mel Blanc. She She's did, a voice of your childhood, you know? Yeah, she she did everything. Uh, and, and now you've got the honor of uh, taking over her her uh her crown i do and, <laughs> and i'm very humbled by it and very very proud and, and do, do, do people even like uh, do people like recognize you uh out in the street you know no. when you're really nope not at all <laughs> and and even if they might wonder um this is my normal speaking voice so it yes. doesn't exactly evoke the the beautiful tones that rusi's did because that was her natural voice maybe just slightly right. Slightly breathy, slightly pitched up, but that was her. So I have I, I I'm glad having a lower voice as well, just because it, it allows me to to do a lot of things and not not just Miss Mouse. Well, of course. I mean, you've done a lot of things uh, seeing over here. You've, you've worked with uh, Agritsuko. You've worked with Amphibia, Doc McStuffins. You've done a lot of crazy stuff. But I want to get to the beginning uh, to where you ended up uh being part of uh, the Drawn Together movie. Now, I shouldn't have watched the Drawn Together movie. Uh, shouldn't <laughs> have watched Drawn Together back as a kid, but I did. I was rebellious. But mm -hmm. I, I want to know how you ended up becoming part of this film. Well, I'll tell you right now, I was watching South Park when it first came out when I was, you know, 14. So yeah. I was shoving towels 
under the door so my parents couldn't see the TV <laughs> light coming from the room since I'm staying up well past my bedtime to watch mm-hmm. it. So you, you get a pass from me. Okay. So I started watching Drawn Together back in college, um, 2003, I believe. And it was very, very funny show. And Jess Harnell is one of our voice actors on uh, it. Love Jess. Captain Hero. You know, they were all great. They were all great. And I, I have a special love for Jack Plotnick. Mm-hmm. Just as Xander. I just, I really loved him. <laughs> but I had met uh, Rob Paulson a couple of years prior at Comic-Con and his, his son, Ash, and I are friends. And that's how I met him, through Ash. And then eventually I met Jess and, and I met Billy West and Maurice LaMarche and just kind of got to meet and know these wonderful voice actors through my friends and through Comic-Con and, and getting to know them. So back in 2009, they were doing a panel at Comic-Con for Drawn Together the Movie. So a bunch of my friends and I like, let's go to this panel. The show's been off the air for four years (laughs) uh, because it had three seasons and it's been off the air for some time. But looks like they're getting a movie. Let's go and support Jess. And we go. And at the end of the panel, they were doing um, a contest. They decided, like, we're going to have three people come up for this contest and the winner will get to be drawn into the movie and get a voiceover part wow and they led with being drawn in so everyone started cheering and then the moderator had said and a voiceover role and i was like did everyone hear that did y'all hear that (laughs) i heard that that could be something you never know that could be something so they picked they picked one guy over here and they picked one guy over here and we're in the front row and my friend diana just she goes pick a chick like (laughs) Like a female, for goodness sake. And everyone turns and looks at her because she's a powerhouse. And Jess sees me because we were in the front row. And he's like, oh, come here, her, her, come here. (laughs) So like, ah, nepotism works. Um, So Jess brought me up and we were like, oh, gosh, what's this contest going to be? Do we have to recreate a scene? Do we have to do our best impression? What will it be? And the contest was how long you could stay handcuffed to the creator of the show. Okay. So they pulled out they pulled out three pairs of like the fuzzy handcuffs oh oh. that you get somewhere. <laughs> I don't know. And they they hooked us all together and I was on the end. So it was me and like one of the other guys and then the third guy and then Dave who was one of the creators, Dave and Matt. Dave Jesser and Matt Silverstein. So I was we were handcuffed to Dave and like, "Okay. This is new." And then they start <laughs> they start leading us away to go some, do some photos or whatever. And I'm like, guys, take my stuff. Cause all my stuff was <laughs> up there. Oh, and a, a friend of mine got my stuff for me. And we, we do some pictures, you know, we, we wrap it up and then like, okay, the con's over. And Dave later told me like, yeah, we, we, we thought it would have ended by then, but we were all still handcuffed. <laughs> and so they're like, you know, you guys are a good sport. Come across the street to the hotel. There's an outdoor patio. We'll get drinks and we'll just, you know, it kind of like a, a mini panel party. So a lot of people right. were there talking and you could just see Dave, like, how are we going to get out of this? And, and <laughs> so I was, was at still, the end. You were still handcuffed you together. Were still right? handcuffed, And I'm like, I don't want to be here. I, my parents live down in San Diego. I have a bed and a shower and food and, <laughs> and, but I'm here cause I want that voiceover role. Cause you never know what could of happen. Course. And it paid off. I'll tell, I'll, I'll get to that, but it paid mm. off. And then we're halfway through that night and everyone's getting tipsy. And at some point they all made me go into the men's room with them because they had to use the restroom. So oh I'm God. like covering my eyes and I'm <laughs> sticking out the, I'm hanging out the door. Like you're using the year, nearest urinal and I don't want to hear anything about it. Because they refused to go into the ladies room. Of course. Um, and, and someone did help me out with that. Like they're like, I'll take your place so you could run to the, re-. like, like, let's be civilized. Yes. And Jess comes up to me and he's like, hey, how you doing? And I'm like, Jess, I'm going to scream. I want this voiceover role, but this is way more than I think any of us anticipate. And he's like, don't worry, I got your back. I got your back. So he had talked to Dave and they're like, hey, let's give the role to Caitlin. I can vouch for her. She's been practicing voiceover. She wants to do this. She, you know, he really helped me out there. And so I, I was allowed to leave. And then the other two, they left eventually as well. Like, for, for different reasons. Right. Um, but they're like, okay, that was a lot. Let's just draw everybody into the movie. It's not, it's not hard to do. Yeah. Um, and then I went in to do the voice and that was a lot of fun. It was a lot, a lot of fun. And I go in and I did um, this little old lady. Um, there were two little old ladies, Cree did one and I did the other. And 
we did a few takes of it and they're like, oh, here, do this role too. We just, we need an extra voice for this girl in the bar. So I did a few takes of that. And then they're like, oh, well, we can get you up to three voices because that's the, that's like how it works. Huh. So they gave me like Smurfette, which is the most notable. Oh, wow. Of the characters in the movie. So I did Smurfette. And so we had a great time. And it, they, they worked on seeing if they could tap Hartley me. It didn't quite work out. But I kept in touch with the creators. We had a great day and they were very proud of me and pleased that like you just wasn't kidding. You know your stuff. So I kept in touch with them and they had brought me in a couple of years later for another show they pitched. Um, and it was down to me and Jennifer Tilly. And they went with Jennifer Tilly. Ah. But um, the people in the room for that like final callback, they passed my name on to like the head of creative comedic development who wow. passed it on to people at Mr. Pickles for Adult ah. Swim. And they reached out to me like, hi, this person said we should reach out to you. And like, I don't know who that guy is, but yeah, I'll come in. <laughs> this isn't shady. So we went into the Hot House production offices and I read for the girlfriend and the mom of the show. Mm -hmm. And the mom went to Brooke Shields and ah. they said, for the heck of it, could you do a little boy voice? So I read for Tommy, the lead. In my best little boy voice at the time. <laughs> and they're like, oh my gosh. That's it. All right. So they gave me the role of the boy and, and the girlfriend who dies in the first episode. So, oh, you know. Well, a lot, there's a lot of death in that show. Mm -hmm. But yeah, so I, I, I did Tommy on that all through the run of Mr. Pickles and then the spinoff Mama Named Me Sheriff. Yeah. And that was my first big break. Yeah. And now uh, you you can thank uh, Yako Warner for giving. Mm -hmm. you. I, no, and it, I've told him yeah, like Yako. I wouldn't. There's instrumental moments that I can recall vividly that like these had to happen. So meeting Rob had to happen. Just getting me, helping me get that role had to happen. Working on Maybe Mr. Maybe not Pickles. being handcuffed. But Maybe yeah. not being handcuffed, but I'm flexible. It wasn't my worst <laughs> Saturday night. Um, and then like uh, I met Bill Farmer through my friend Lee uh. and he did my first demos and having a show I've booked. He, he used those two elements plus his own confidence in my whatever talent I had at that time it was I listened to the I listened back to my old stuff from that time and I'm like oh gosh well, why did they take me on <laughs> you know and it, it's the best you can do at the time you're always growing oh yeah so so always he pitched learning. me to his agent like you know there's room for growth she's got she, and she he said she's got something that'll go places if it's if it's honed right and grown right so my agency took a chance on me at AVO and I've been with them ever since of course. And I mean, you know, you, you've been able to do so many other things mm -hmm. um, beyond uh, just film. You've done video games, animation. I mean, you've done the trifecta. I mean, one of my favorites that you've done uh, was the, the recreation of Thundercats. Uh, I love it so much. That was <laughs> such a fun show. We recorded ensemble and they don't do that anymore. Oh, but man. I was when I was in there, I'm with, Pat, you know, Patrick Size, Chris yep. Jai Alex, Erica Limbeck and Max Middleman. And they're the core four. Mm -hmm. And so half the episodes, it was just us five hanging out. And then we had a lot of other staples. Andrew Cascino. Oh, I feel bad if I forget everybody. Trevor Duvall. That's how we say his name. Trevor Duvall. Trevor Duvall. Trevor Duvall. <laughs> oh, my God. Jim, Jim Meskimen. Mm. So fun. Such mm -hmm. a fun guy. And I know there's a, oh, Dana Snyder. I oh, love. Oh, okay. Yes. I love Dana Snyder. He is so <laughs> funny. And. It just, he starts talking and you laugh. Yes. <laughs> he's just such a funny guy. He knows what to say. He's got a great improv. He's just, just a fantastic group of people. That of was course. such a happy moment now, in my career. Now you mentioned uh, ensemble recording. And now I'm guessing ensemble is just, you're all in a room together reading your lines. And yes. uh, so it, what's the difference between uh, being in a booth by yourself and of course being with an ensemble, is there a difference in like creative flow, maybe some improv, ad-libbing? Yes, I, I believe there is personally. With ensemble records, they usually dedicate this day of the week at this time, like, like these ones were Wednesdays from two to six and it mm. was blocked out that way. So everyone involved, it's like, this is when you gotta come in. And sometimes people are on vacation or they get sick, it happens. Yes. But the core of it, it's like, this is your day and time. That way everyone can organize their schedule to be there. And then when you're recording ensemble, we usually take the full four hours to record one episode, but you now have gotten all the parts. Right. So it can be a money saver by just renting one studio for this amount of time and paying like the actors in bulk like that. 
And then you can read off each other. We watch the animatics. You can take a few takes the way they envisioned it in the animatic right. with um, Victor's ideas. And then you can do your own interpretation because you never know what'll stick, what'll be funny. Um, and then recording solo, it's, it takes a little more time because everyone's at different times, but mm -hmm. you can usually get in and out with your episode within like, say an hour. Um, cause you can do three takes of every line. They can pick and choose. Whereas ensemble, like you do two read throughs and we were pretty much done because right. they had everything they needed through that organic. We're all in the moment. My vote is for ensemble just cause you want to work with your peers and you want to have fun that way. And it let, it really lets you showcase that creative flow that got you in the room. Well, of course. Yes. And then, I, oh yeah. No, I mean, I was, I was just going to say, I mean, a perfect example was, um, there was a behind the scenes special done with the Futurama cast. Um, mm -hmm. Have Billy West, Katie Seagal, John DiMaggio, uh, Phil Lamar, everybody in the same room doing, uh, I forget which episode it was. I think it was the movie, but they were all together in a circle reading all their parts. And I just thought, you know, they feed off of their creative energy. Yeah. And, you know, I feel like it could make a fun time, you know, you know, doing, you know, you're doing all that. Four, you said four hours of work, uh, but, you know, you can make it fun by interact. I think the interaction is what makes ensemble to me yes. uh, a better option than just simple, you know, being in a enclosed booth. You're maybe like maybe a two foot two by two cube or whatever. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'd be claustrophobic all day long. Well, uh, ensembles were pretty much the standard until around 2010, I would say. Mm hmm. Around that part, um, I could be wrong. I wasn't in the biz at that time, <laughs> but but they were pretty standard for the most part until they just changed things up. More studios popped up, and like mm -hmm. people got so busy booking so many things, and you, sometimes you don't know in advance. So like I I do juggle a lot of my work as well. Like they want yeah. me in on this day, but I've got to hold on this day. And yep. <laughs> if if we can do it like this, it'll be perfect. But can each studio accommodate that ideal? vision right so it's just it's it's a it's a juggle every week but that's that's part of the game of course i mean i can imagine you know doing a, an episode of of uh, mickey mouse funhouse and you know having uh brett bill to is it tony or is it or is it dan ross doing donald it's, I can't it's tony it is tony okay i have tress mcneil uh, iconic voice actress everybody in that in the same room i i would figure uh, i'm thinking it's individually done for those shows yes OK, yeah. yeah, I figure, you know, if you're able to do all that in um, in one single room, I, I, I think it can make for a good blooper reel. <laughs> it could. I've heard stories from the old Mickey Mouse Clubhouse days where, you know, you'd have Rusi and Wayne and Tony and Bill and Jim doing their episodes yes. and, and Tress. And Wayne would just make everyone laugh or joke around or Bill would make everyone laugh. You know, they would all goof around and it would make like Rusi laugh so hard. She had to like take a minute to breathe and they're like, we're wasting time. And, like, it's so fun. It's so funny. So like I've heard those stories and like, well, that's the best kind of problem to have where you're having too much fun. Well, yeah, because if you're not having fun, then why the hell are you in the business? <laughs> well, John DiMaggio had said once, like, you know, if, if you're not if you don't like cartoons, Something's wrong. Cartoons yeah. are for everybody. Animation is for everybody. You have different exactly. genres. But I, I definitely watched a few episodes of like Mickey Mouse Clubhouse um, when when Minnie was was out for us. And mm -hmm. I, I, it was definitely like, yeah, this is for a this is for a two year old for sure. Mm -hmm. Because I, I answered the question, Mickey, I found where the pencil is yes. and you're staring at me. And then you say, right, it's over there. I knew that, Mickey. I it's pointed the, to the pencil. I, I, yeah, there's the tool. I Use see it right it. there. That's the mouse tool. Why are we still discussing this? <laughs> we know the mouse tool, so please use it. Pluto is needs to get out of the doghouse. It was frustrating because I knew <laughs> better than a two-year-old. Of course, everybody's better than a two-year-old. Uh, even a one-year-old's better than a two-year-old in my <laughs> in some cases. Two-year-olds are those that sweet transitional stage. Like you oh, can be course. an angel or you can be, I'd like to leave the room. This yeah. child <laughs> has now developed my way or the highway. Yeah. No, I, I remember I actually saw this on TikTok once uh, when Dora, Dora the Explorer would be like, uh, say backpack with me. This kid would go backpack. And then when she would go louder, he screamed out of the top of his lungs. Backpack! <laughs> say backpack! Say backpack! Backpack!
He's good at I'm, following directions. He's good at following directions, but you know, I, I wouldn't take it that literally. But you know, <laughs> and so going now, of course, this is the fun part where I wanted to know more about Mini and everything about doing Mini, uh, being Mini, and basically you're the ambassador for the great Minnie Mouse. Uh, Thank you. Of course. Of, of, of course, when, of, when sadly Brucey passed away, um, was there like an audition process to uh, bring you on? Were there other people in consideration? Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty behind closed doors. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I had I had heard of her passing over the weekend through a friend, mm -hmm. and it was like a week and a half after her passing that they they sent out the auditions just to, to general a general audition to voiceover agencies. I don't know the extent of it. Definitely the agencies in L.A. and then each agent has their own way of doing things. So I'm not sure how many girls read for it, who read for it. Mm -hmm. I would assume as many as possible it, it it is a beautiful role and it, it, it the worst it couldn't hurt to try like you know yeah. just you never know what what's inside you and but i'm not sure if it went out to new york or chicago or texas i don't know the the breadth of that but that probably would have been like if we can't find the, the talent locally here in la we could branch out further yes um and we had a week to do the audition so I'd practiced every day with my two best friends who I told because I needed like I need another set of ears because mm. we're, we're matching lines that have aired in television episodes we've got written lines that don't exist anywhere so how would you interpret those lines there's a mm -hmm. song we need to sing and I, I booked time in a actual recording booth because I didn't have the capability to marry vocals to an instrumental track with my setup right so I needed I needed a professional to do that Yes. So, and the, I went with Art Butler. He's got a beautiful ear. Like he, I trusted him voraciously of, you know, how close am I? Is the pacing correct? You know, she's not thrill. She's not shrill. She's not piercing. She's soft. And, and there were some nuances that I, I had to learn over time. Right. And it's like, and once you hear it, once you feel it, then you know, okay, this is, this is the sweet spot. This is how she's supposed to sound. Right. There were a lot of nuances I already had practiced for years and years and years because I started practicing around 2005 because um, I found out I could do it back then. Like I was just joking around with friends at work and <laughs> we heard the parade come in and one of Minnie's cue lines plays and we knew the cue by heart because we hear it every day at the right, same of course, position. Yes. <laughs> so I just did my best impression and a, ca a co-worker was like, you sound exactly like her. <laughs> Like, do I? Well, let's put a let's put a pin in that. You never know. And so, like, she has her scoops up. She has her scoops down. She's mm -hmm. got a nasality quality when she says her N's and her M's in particular. Mm -hmm. uh, that was all Rusi. And Rusi was from the Midwest, so there's a there's a very light twang in there. Yep. And I've been told I have that twang. I don't hear it. <laughs> I'm sure it's there because my parents are from Wyoming. Ah, OK. So, and, you know, we moved out to California before I was even born. So it's like I've born and raised out here. But if your home life has a slightly twangy accent, you're going to have that slightly twang. Of course. Yes. So I Midwestern believe them charm. that it's there. I just I've I've never isolated a moment where I've heard it. So <laughs> I'm normal. Uh, <laughs> but um, we submitted it. And then I had heard back the day I was working on Frozen 2 for the looping mm. group. They're like, Disney would like to see you. Oh. Like, oh, okay, okay, it's happening, okay. <laughs> uh, go in and, and did the, the callback, and it was very a very specific callback. Mm -hmm. um, they had said, like, we don't have to, we never did the singing in either callback. We didn't bother with the singing. And they right. said, like, no, that's fine, we're good. So that's a good sign. Yes. <laughs> and, and then we worked on certain, they, and at later, later, much later, it's like they were working with you to make sure, you know, when you're hitting the high notes, especially for the zany stuff, there's still a breath equality to prevent it from being shrill. Right. Um, since it's not your natural tone, you know, you could crack a little bit. So, like, if it cracks, can we smooth it out? Are there certain placements where it drops in and out? And the first callback was mainly, like, 
any, the, the first callback for anything is proving that what you did in your audition can be recreated in the studio right now. Right. So, and a lot of casting can happen just from the audition if the casting directors know the actor and like, oh, they can totally do that voice. That's not, well, of course. That, that's what I'm hearing is not the 20th take. What I'm hearing is the first, second or third take where it's easy to get to. And, but this one is such a specific voice that they, they brought us in. There were seven of us at the first callback. I don't know who else was a part of it um, or how close they came. But we did the first callback. I was so anxious that entire week. I've never been, I don't have anxiety attacks or panic attacks, but I was never so on edge as I was that week. Mm -hmm. It was hard. And then the following week I got a second callback. And like when Brett was brought in for Mickey, he did three or four callbacks. So I assume that's what we're, we're kind of looking at here. Right. So I went in for the second callback and it was exactly the same as the first. Mm -hmm. um, everybody who was involved in casting, they all talked to each other. Like, does anyone have opinions or ideas or things we need to double check? Is there anything other, the other participants of the callbacks are doing that she can't do? Like, like if we're, if we're going to make a decision, let's see this. And then at the end of the second callback, they said, all right, Caitlin, we're going to send you to Disney television next week. So I thought, okay, good. A third callback. I don't have to wait again. I'm kind of told directly, like, okay, maybe right. now, now they might test us with footage. Like, or, or I'm not sure. It was my second callback ever. So I don't really, I didn't really know what would happen. Mm -hmm. um, and then I went in and one of the assistants at the studio handed me a stack of papers to sign. And I remember looking at it like, we don't sign papers at a callback. Is this an NDA? <laughs> And they're like, no, honey, this is the job. They didn't tell you you got the job. And, she, and the way she said, I'll never forget it. They didn't tell you you got the job. <laughs> and I was like, no. I, 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 I called my agent the previous week and I had told her like, hey, it went really well. They're going to have me go to Disney TV. And she was super proud and congratulatory. Like, yeah, I just got off the phone with the team and with Bill and, and everything's looking great. Proud of you, kiddo. All right, I got to run. And. <laughs> uh, somewhere in that mix, they knew I had been given the job, or at least I'm like they're going to test me officially. But it didn't translate. It did not register right so away. I did. I did the. I did our session for that day. We did all the, the projects we needed to do, and I thanked everyone because there were like 15 people in the room, and that doesn't happen. Mm -hmm. So it was definitely daunting. But like, I'm here to do a job. You guys are superfluous, and I mean that in the most loving way. Of course, it don't matter. <laughs> So I went in, did my, did my job. And then I left. I thanked everybody. I said, this was an honor and a true blessing. Thank you so much. I adored it. Bye-bye. <laughs> and I'm driving, I'm driving away. And I call my agent like, Sandy, this was the job. Oh, yeah, it was, honey. Didn't I tell you? <laughs> I think I misinterpreted our understanding of the situation, Sandy. And she's like, Oh, you're fine, kiddo. It's all right. They, I just got off the phone with them. They said they were very happy. You did fine. I got to go. Bye. <laughs> Sandy's a busy agent. So, mm -hmm. so she, her, and, and her, her saying something is going to be great or something's going to be okay. Like that's worth its weight in gold. Cause she wouldn't, you know, we're not going to waste time buttering the toast or right, we're not going to sugarcoat it. Like let's get to the meat of every situation, be they mm -hmm. good, bad, or something to fix. So when she's like, yeah, you got it. They loved you. You're great, kiddo. Have a nice day. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Thank you. I mean, I I understand why you know you thought you didn't get because you know you usually get like an offer or something along the lines. You know, usually like Sandy would call or she would email like saying you know, hi Caitlin, congratulations, the team has picked you to to do Mrs. Butterworth in this commercial, right? Or or the the subject will be like, yay, a booking! Five <laughs> exclamation points. But there wasn't any, any of that. Um, it was all through phone call. <laughs> it, it, I mean, I look back on it and I can laugh at it now, but I was definitely driving home like, that didn't play out like my fantasy played out. <laughs> she would have called me and had exuded proudness and I would have tastefully cried and I would have thanked her. <laughs> and, and I'm driving home like, I feel good, but I feel like I missed out on something. But I feel good. 
So I'm just going to go get a bunch of Chipotle <laughs> and a box of Oreos and a bottle of Martinelli's apple grape cider. See, you, you and I'm going to go watch well. a TV show of my choosing and I'm going to enjoy my evening. You, and that's exactly what I did. Exactly. You, you know me all too well. That's like what I do every Friday night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but <laughs> like I, I get a reward. I was a good girl. So yeah. I'm getting Chipotle. Don't tell my roommate. <laughs> <laughs> he has opinions. I have the uh, right opinions. Mm-hmm. Chipotle is Chipotle. Yay. Yes. So. Yes, absolutely. And of course, now you have probably one of the most prestigious roles on the planet. You're all over the planet. You're at all the parks. You're on television around mm-hmm. the world. And, and, you know, do you ever look at one of the new cartoons that you're in and say, holy crap, that's me. There, there are times in like, especially in the wonderful world of Mickey shorts, there were, there yes. were definitely, we do several takes of every line and we, we try different ideas in the session. Cause they have like, let's try it like this. We just got an idea. So very much organic improv. Here's the script. Here's the animatic, but here's some alternate ideas. Here's mm-hmm. some rewrites. Like they're always thinking what could be the funniest take. And there were times in some of the episodes where it's like, I'm really proud of myself. That sounded so much like Rusi. I'm 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 proud that I was able to achieve that and and that I'm able to carry on the gift that she gave Minnie for 32 years. I want to make sure that that's still there, that she's still lovable. She's still amicable and still approachable as a character, because having worked at Disneyland, I see the connection that like, that's the middleman for the audience versus the product. So especially children, like Disneyland's the place where you can meet Minnie and you could tell her, I watch Bowtoons every day. Uh, uh, When we wake up and have breakfast, we watch the new mixed up adventure episode. Like this is their chance to like tell their hero how they feel. Of course. And I I get that profusely. Like I want to meet my heroes and tell them how I felt. And I have been able to do that with Rob and Mo and, Jess and Billy and it means a lot that they hear it and receive it and accept it like it doesn't have to go beyond that but just knowing that they accept your love for them that 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 shows you've been seen so oh. I I understand how our guests wanted to be seen by the people they loved and cherished and like oh, this is course. the character integrity this is the branding this is the Disney magic we want to preserve so I think that also helped in me being that ambassador for Minnie because I understand her And I understand what she means to the company and to our audience. Of course. And And, and, yeah. Yes. And and there there are definitely times when I'm like, well, that was a Caitlin line. That's definitely (laughs) something I did. I don't know if Rusi would have done it, but I did it. (laughs) And and every so often there's a take. I was like, they went with that one. (laughs) I like this one. Or there were takes when I was like, "Ooh, that was a rough day. I wish I could redo that one. Mm-hmm. I did not like that one. And, and you do the best you can. And, you know, no, no one's 100 percent perfect, but I, I'm definitely still proud of what I've done. And I'm still growing and still learning even now. Two and a half years later. Well, yes. And, and I mean, when I first heard the uh, when I first heard you, your your mini voice, um, I was actually like, that's that's the new one. I thought that's Rusi. I mean, you sounded just like Rusi the first time I heard Good. you. So, I mean, it, it, obviously, I mean, there are some nuances and I'm kind of I can kind of pick up on those. But in, in all fairness, a little child can probably ne- never tell. And they're smart. They're, they know what they sound like. Yeah. Uh, until five. It, it's it's pretty self-explanatory. What you see is what you get. Of course, this is these characters. Yes. Uh, and of course, I mean. Of course, people had to adjust with uh, with Brett, you know, when he started doing Mickey um, and sometimes when Tony and Samuel can't be Donald, you know, when Daniel Ross comes in, you know, he does an impeccable job himself. And of course, Bill Farmer, you can't you can't underestimate the talent of Bill Farmer. I, I mean, these guys, if they could build a Disney ru- like Rushmore, it would be, of course, Walt. It would be Bill Wayne. Press. Tress. Oh, my God. Tress. I she, love her. She does. She's done everything in the book. She's the she, uh, they, they couldn't have picked a better voice for Daisy. They couldn't. She And that's Tress herself. Like that's that Daisy is the closest to the the id, the ego and the super ego, you know, whatever those. Yes. Me, myself and I is. But like 
That's Tress's natural reactions. That's her natural voice. It's just her being free. And I love that. And I, I've met her briefly in the studio in passing mm. before the lockdown. And then we've chatted a, a couple times through Zoom when we did remote recording. But I haven't really gotten to meet her and know her well. And I, I do hope that happens in the future because we well, have several mutual friends and, you know, conventions are, are might be a thing in the future. So I definitely am looking forward to that. But they play me a lot of her lines when I was catching up on a bulk of the work that, mm -hmm. that we were behind on. So they played me a lot of her lines to help lead me into what's the tone of the read? How would how would she respond? And I just, you know, close your eyes and Tress is right there talking to me. So she's helped me so much and she doesn't even know it. <laughs> you hear that, Tress? <laughs> yeah. Oh, and, oh, Tress and Rusi, to, they were my June Forays. Like everyone yes. knows June Foray. Everyone loves June Foray. She is the pioneer. She's the godmother of, of female voiceover. Of course. And we wouldn't be where we are without her. Of but course, like yes. for a lot of the generation of actors from like the 80s and the 90s, you know, they, they they are now the the inspirational overheads for my generation. Yes. Um, so it all feeds itself. You know, they loved June and like, well, I love you guys, too. So Tress has been a part of my childhood since I can remember. And so is Katie Lee and so has Rusi and, and they just they're there. We love them and they're still doing what they love doing. And they're still reaching out to people even now. I mean, I mean. With with my case, it's, it's of course Billy West, Phil Lamar, uh, well obviously Tress McNeil, uh, Frank Welker is another great one. Oh, I, uh, oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I look up to these people, and, uh, and Corey I mean, Burton. Oh my God! I, oh, I why did I forget Corey? Jesus. Frank but, and Corey need to be Disney legends. Bar they none. need to. They need to. It, it, it's it's time, Disney. Announce it at D23 this September. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think they have anything yet out for D23. Like they're working on the programming right now. I, hopefully, I hopefully we'll see the nominations, do the ceremony, all those wonderful things. I'm planning. I might I might just have to take a trip out to Anaheim and get over there. <laughs> uh, so. Lastly, before we get out of here. I got to hear the mini voice. Oh, do you? I got it. Well, I think they uh, everybody in the actor audience does prepares. Too. Of course, that's the name of a book I had to read in college. <laughs> the actor prepares Meisner. Stanislavski. Of course. Tchaikovsky. There you go. All warm right. up. You got to warm up. You got to prepare. <laughs> you got you to do everything you need to do. Ladies, do and gentlemen, too. ladies and gentlemen, Minnie Mouse. Oh, hello, Kyle. It's so nice to see you. Thank you so much for bringing me on the show. We had a wonderful time, and I just love talking to you. Thank you. You have no idea how close I am to crying right now. That cry. is beautiful. I want to see you cry. <laughs> Do it. I'm going to hold it together, but... Uh, <laughs> Caitlin, uh, you've been an absolute pleasure to speak with. Uh, hopefully uh, to hear from you and maybe see you in the future. Mm -hmm. uh, it's been an absolute blast. Uh, maybe next time you could join Brett with me on the show. Who knows? Uh, but, you know, this was an absolute thrill. Uh, I, I got to go back to Disney. It's been 16 years. I need it's to go. It's right here. This it's is right where there. I live. I need I'm, to go I'm now. Homeless. I live at the bottom of the stage in a sleeping bag. Come say hi. <laughs> you would think. You would I think. eat leftover churro scraps. That's how I survive. <laughs> and, and and on the occasion, Chipotle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the moral of the story is. Eat Chipotle. Eat Chipotle. And live out your dreams. <laughs> yes, in that order. And exactly in that order. I'm probably going to get a burrito bowl tonight. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Caitlin Robrock, ladies and gentlemen. We'll see you guys next time for another episode of The Hurt Show. Thanks so much for tuning in. Goodbye. Bye. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>